Hi everybody. It's the assembly team here from Aussie Road and it's Izzy and Graham and Tim and myself, Lizzie. And it's all a bit strange because I'm talking to you and it's a funny little head that we've got here and that's all you're going to see of me today because I'm actually recording this on my phone. And the reason for that is why? Can anybody tell me why I'm talking to you through my phone on a video and then putting it online? Yep, that's right. It's the pandemic. It's because of this really awful illness that we talked about before the end of term. Um, the thing that's really making people very sick, very, very poorly. And as a result of that, uh, although it's the school holidays anyway, you've been at home for some time now. And we've all got to stay at home to try and make sure that everyone stays safe and as few people as possible get sick and make sure that we can all come back together again uh, when all of this is over and be fit and healthy. I wonder how you have all been doing. Perhaps you'd just like to kind of shout out just where you are right now in your living room or in your bedroom or wherever you might be watching this and say thumbs up if actually you're doing OK at the moment. Thumbs down if you think, oh, no, this is really awful. I'm struggling today or yeah, it's OK. Got good bits and I got bad bits. Well, today we want to carry on and tell you that, number one, we really are thinking about you and we're caring for you and we really, really miss you. And we so look forward to seeing you again and doing our assemblies in person. Today, we want to continue the story, though, of the thing that's really important for Christians, and that's the continuing story of what Jesus did um, for us when he went to the cross. And today we are exploring the story of Good Friday. Remember our assembly about Monday Thursday? At Jesus' last meal with his friends, what did the bread and the wine mean? So if you remember from our assembly about Monday Thursday, the bread means Jesus' broken body and the wine means his blood that was shed. It's talking about the way that Jesus was going to die. Towards the end of the meal, Judas left early. Can you remember what he was going to do? So if you remember, Judas, one of Jesus' closest friends, was going to betray him. He was going to be paid to show the authorities who Jesus was so that he could be arrested in silence at night with nobody watching. Late at night in the Garden of Gethsemane, Judas came with some Jewish leaders who didn't like Jesus and some soldiers to arrest Jesus. They did not know what Jesus looked like, so Judas kissed Jesus on the cheek so the soldiers knew who to arrest. The rest of the disciples, Jesus' closest friends, ran away and Jesus was left all alone and arrested. We are going to try to act out some of what happened next. Look out for when we ask you to be the crowd. Caiaphas said, come on, tell us, are you the Messiah, the Son of God? You have said so. Caiaphas ripped his clothes because he was so upset by what he heard. Blasphemy, you all heard it. What do you think? You may have heard the word blasphemy. That's what Caiaphas was saying, that that's what he thought Jesus was saying. I wonder if you know what blasphemy means. Have a little think. It actually means that you're saying that you're God, or, or maybe you're not showing respect for God at all. When they heard this, lots of the people all round said, he's worthy of death. Terrible thing. Now, the rest of the Jewish leaders got all around him and they spat on him. They hit him from behind and said, come on, Messiah, prophesy who hit you. 
But they had one problem now. They wanted to put Jesus to death, but only the Roman governor could do that. Hmm. So they took Jesus for another trial in front of Pontius Pilate. The Jewish leaders were in the room. They were saying terrible things about Jesus, but Jesus just ignored them and would not answer. Pilate then said, come on, save yourself. Are you the king of the Jews? You have said so. Can't you hear what they're saying about you? Say something to them. But Jesus remained silent. Now Pilate was amazed and he didn't really know what to do. From his point of view, Jesus had done nothing wrong. But there was an angry crowd who was waiting for him to do something. And then he remembered that once a year, round about this time, the Roman governor usually released one Jewish prisoner to keep the Jewish people happy. Now, at this time, there was a prisoner called Barabbas, who was a violent man. So Pilate gave a crowd the choice. Which one do you want me to release? Barabbas, the violent man, or Jesus, who you call Messiah? But the Jewish leaders went around persuading the crowd to ask for Barabbas to be released, to have Jesus executed. So when Pilate asked, who do you want me to release? Everybody shouted, Barabbas. I wonder whether you might try just shouting that at home, just pretending to be part of the crowd, uh, just thinking that you're there right now at this moment and you're shouting, yes, Barabbas, Barabbas. You might want to join in. Barabbas, Barabbas. When then he asked everybody, what do you want me to do with him? They said, crucify him. Who do you want me to release? Jesus or Barabbas? Say Barabbas with me. Barabbas. What shall I do with Jesus then? Say crucify him with me. Crucify him. Why? What crime has he committed? Shout it this time. Crucify him. Pilate was worried that the crowd was getting angrier and angrier that perhaps they might riot. So he did this rather extraordinary thing. He washed his hands in front of the crowd. I am innocent of this man's blood. It's your responsibility. Guards, take Jesus away and have him crucified. The governor's soldiers said lots of unkind things to Jesus. They put a purple robe on him and a crown of thorns on his head. Then they made Jesus carry his cross. After a while he became so tired that he couldn't go on. So the soldiers made a man called Simon, not Simon whom Jesus called Peter, carry the cross to a place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull. There they crucified Jesus with two other men. People shouted things at Jesus. He saved others, but he can't save himself. For three hours in the middle of the day, the sky went completely dark. Before he died, Jesus prayed an amazing prayer. Father, forgive them, because they don't understand what they are doing. And then he died. They took him down from the cross and buried him in a tomb which looks like a small cave with a huge stone rolled over the front of it. This is not the end of the story 
and next time we will remember what happened on the third day. This part of the story is very sad and it's hard to listen to. Jesus' friends let him down when he needed them the most. People who should have known better are very cruel and unkind in the story. And they turned a whole crowd of people against Jesus. We didn't have time to tell you all the horrible things that they did. But there is also something amazing about the story because it shows us God's love and forgiveness. We believe that Jesus died in our place so that we may be forgiven for all the mistakes and all the pain that we cause when we do the wrong thing. Jesus' final prayer was, Father God, forgive them. Before he died, Jesus forgave all the people who had treated him so badly. If Jesus could forgive people in this moment, then surely we can forgive people who have hurt us when they come and say, sorry. There are two really simple phrases that would change the world if we could learn to use them. The first one is, I am sorry, when you really mean it. And the second one is, I forgive you. We're going to pray now, just as we usually do at the end of the assembly. And if you want to make this prayer your own, then the usual thing applies. Just say Amen or Amen at the end of it. So let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for this story of Jesus on that Good Friday. And as we think of all that he did and how he poured out love and forgiveness for us, even in the face of people doing really terrible things to him, just because he loved us all so much, we want to say thank you for that. But we also want to ask you to help us that we might do something like that for other people. Just be loving and forgiving in everything that we do and everything that we say, so that we may be, as you, God, would have us be, full of love. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much for joining us, and I hope that you have taken something from this assembly. We've really enjoyed trying to put it together. It's our first effort, and we'll try again, and we'll probably get better at it next time. Bye. <laughs>